Hey, what's happening, everybody? Appreciate you tuning back into another video. Um, this one, we're going to go over kind of macroeconomics. We're going to talk about um, Ray Dalio. So for those of you who don't know who Ray Dalio is, um, he's a guy in this video. It's not this guy. It's this guy. Um, and he's basically a hedge fund legend. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with him. He He's a... He's got a bunch of books out on the market. He just released a new book and he's been going on kind of an interview tear recently um, talking about a lot of similarities between the market outlook, the economic outlook that we're in today versus where it was back in the 1930s and 40s, right? And so a lot of people are saying, you know, when is this downtrend coming? The, the stock market's at an all-time high. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average here from 2008. I guess this was 2009 when we finally reached our bottom to the, the wick at the top here. We've grossed, you know, 308%. Um, it's, it's been 3,800 days, somewhere around there. I actually, I moved it a little bit too far off, but you know, somewhere in that range, 3,600 days or so. And and the longest bull market in history, people are wondering what's going to happen. And I think this relates a lot to our crypto markets, right? Because a lot of you are probably saying like, dude, we don't care about the, the traditional assets. Well, Ray Dalio is a founder of Bridgewater Associates. They have $160 billion under asset or assets under management. Um, this is a huge, huge hedge fund. And Ray Dalio is a uh, for lack of a better term, is just an economic genius. And um, he basically says that the economy looks like it did back in the late 30s in many ways. Interest rates hit zero in the early stages of each crisis. Asset prices are near full capacity. Interest rates are still low. The wealth gap has widened and populism is on the rise and global tensions are rising. And so I think this is something that we've talked about in previous videos pretty extensively is the fact that, you know, all of these other uh, global currencies, you know, the Argentina is a great example. And Dalio actually um, touches on that in, in one of his interviews. Um, I believe it was the Bloomberg one. I actually didn't watch this Business Insider one, but for they're basically all the same. Um, he talks about the same stuff. And when when you see these global tensions, um, they can kind of be they can kind of give you sort of some foreshadowing as to what may happen. And he also says that all of this happens in the past. Like he, he is, uh, I don't know if you've read some of any of his books, but he, he talks about, you know, all weather portfolios, which basically means like there's different seasons in economics and he has a different, you know, strategy like you should for each different season, um, in terms of investing, right? Like that's, that's his business. They run a hedge fund. So that's, that's important. They have that. But basically what he's getting at is back in the thirties and forties, um, we, we hit this bottom, right? And he's basically saying, between somewhere in this range, between the 30s and 40s, we had this this big rise, 373 percent. Um, this lasted about 17, 1800 days, and and we were seeing this run up. And he's equating this run up to what we're witnessing today, which is right here. Um, and we can get a little more exact on this, just to kind of I don't know, just for come on. Just for our own purposes here, we'll get a little more exact. So 315%, about 3,500 days or so. Um, what, what he's saying is the interest rates at this point in time were at zero, right? The, the Federal Reserve dropped the interest rates to zero. And basically what they do in these situations, as Ray Dalio was explaining in his interviews, was the Federal Reserve prints more money, thus you know, inflation starts to rise. And and then th what they do with this printed money is they buy U.S. equities um, and they, they basically prop up the market, quantitative easing, et cetera. So um, he says, we're in the later part of the cycle, the part of the cycle in which monetary policy is tightening and there's not much capacity to squeeze out of the economy. He expects a downturn in roughly two years, which he even admitted he's, he's like, I have no idea. Um, we're just going to have to play it day by day. But what he's getting at is with with the monetary policy tightening is the Fed increasing interest rates and, you know, equities, assets, um, the the traditional, you know, securities like like uh, the stock market, right, indexes, et cetera. Um, those are very sensitive to monetary policy. And he's basically saying that there's not a lot of juice left in the market for these monetary policies to be tightening up. 
And the biggest problem he named back in um, in the 30s and 40s was the fact that the the wealth gap really, really widened in this particular time when we had this downtrend because everybody was just, you know, euphoric, right? And and granted, you know, in this time frame, we definitely weren't reaching all time highs like we are now. So maybe the euphoria is even more extended in in our market today. And a lot of people aren't really, you know, I think a lot of people are looking out for kind of a, a stock market correction of some kind. Um, I mean, we saw that a few months ago, but and by the way, this is the monthly chart, if, if you're wondering. But long story short is what I think is how this relates back to crypto is if the governments get this wrong, if the Federal Reserve gets this wrong again, and we end up going sort of in the same direction that we went in the past, which sort of seems to be the commonality when you, you know, backtest certain economic uh, catastrophes, right? Um, they tend to have happened before and they tend to happen again. And I don't know why it is, why governments can't get it right or whatever. Um, hopefully they do get it right and the wealth gap doesn't widen too much. But what I think how this relates to crypto is the fact that we now have a, a new asset class to kind of harbor, safe harbor your money. And I think um, I, I said it in a previous video that, you know, different cryptos, a lot of these will probably go to zero, um, you know, maybe not the top, you know, 50 or 100, whatever. I, I'm not going to name any names that I think are going to go to zero. But I think a lot of these um, and, and maybe they don't go to zero, but maybe they don't give the investors the return that they're looking for, because we've talked about this in the past is that buying a coin is not buying a, a an equity or a security right you're not buying a, a, a stock you're not buying a portion of that company therefore you're not entitled to the the underlying earnings of that company so there's no real profit making mechanism for you as a coin holder for a lot of these coins and we talked about uh bnb coin uh in the past and that is just a really good example because by buying the coin you get a rebate on trading on Binance, right? So it actually benefits the end customer to buy the coin if they're going to do trading. Thus, there is true value in buying BNB. And there are, there is definitely true value in a lot of these altcoins, but that, that's just the easiest example to give you guys, um, on a video like this with the, the time constraints. But how I think this is going to play out is, with Bitcoin being sort of the driver of the ship and Bitcoin uh, really being a, a currency instead of sort of a, a protocol or a, a, a platform like maybe Ethereum, I think in, in an economic downtrend, we'll probably see a lot of people get sick and tired of the wealth gap just widening once again and and the government's treating it the same way that they treated it in the 30s and 40s and and thus i think that that maybe it's not bitcoin maybe it's a different crypto but i think that there there will be some sort of market switch and then ray dalio also explained how i don't know if they go into this um i don't think he goes in they, they go into this much in this article i mean you guys can read this i'll link this in the description um, it's actually really interesting, but he he explains how it's going to be a currency crisis in in the the next downtrend. That's kind of what he's predicting, and that's something that I've been talking about for a while. And I'm not claiming to be smarter than Ray Dalio by any means. This guy's a genius. But having a, a currency crisis would would sort of lend the hand to it making sense, right? And and he actually says to our benefit. The U.S. dollar is the world reserve currency at the moment, right? And he says that we're we're sort of threatening that world reserve currency by if we mess this up, if we mess up the next downtrend, um, the amount of debt that we have, it's it's lucky that it's in our own currency because we can just print more money and deflate the value of the dollar, and and basically that that is a a helpful asset to us that that the global reserve currency is is the US dollar in terms of like look at Argentina where if they just print more money um the 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 debt that they owe to other countries is in is pegged to the US dollar which means that the more money they print they're just devaluing their own currency and that is actually a, a big hindrance to what they're trying to accomplish is pay back more US dollars and so that becomes a big um stressor in in their economy 
And so he's saying, you know, we kind of threaten that if we go overboard and do the same thing again and the wealth gap, you know, really widens once again and and maybe the U.S. economy that the Federal Reserve can't figure out how to pay back the debt or whatever, that we have some some episode of inflation, maybe hyperinflation that can really uh, lend a, a major hand to to Bitcoin sort of becoming that or maybe it's not Bitcoin, but but some crypto becoming um, very, very worldwide viable. And, and that's kind of the, the theme of this, the video that I wanted to talk about. So, um, long story short, read this article. It's very interesting. Ray Dalio, if you haven't done any research on him, I definitely recommend that. Um, there's a couple articles I want to go over. Let's see. This one was the first one. Coinbase hires LinkedIn executive of new data chief. Um, th this is really interesting to me because Michael Lee is a was a senior uh, LinkedIn executive who spent more than seven years with the professional networking platform, and he's now taken the role of vice president of data, according to a blog post. Um, I've I've read a few articles about um, how you know crypto's dead, and a lot of these people, you know, a lot of these big bankers and stuff are not interested in in crypto anymore. You're seeing some some of these uh, big companies that said that they were going to build trading desks and they're kind of backing out and everybody's getting scared. Well, when you see news like this, um, Coinbase is sort of slowly taking over the crypto world, um, especially during this downtrend when a lot of people aren't really paying attention. And this isn't the first LinkedIn executive to move over to Coinbase. Um, it says Emily Choi had joined um, to spearhead the acquisition efforts. They, Coinbase has, is going to hire more than 100 new employees. They've hired vice presidents for finance, communications, engineering, uh, chief financial and compliance officers as well. Um, they're gearing up for the next sort of bull run or the next, maybe it's not even a bull run, but just the next wave of people to kind of get introduced to crypto. And I think that's coming over the next couple of years for sure. So this is, this is good news. Um, when you see this, I don't think, like, I think that in this downtrend, just the news is more negative. But that doesn't mean that there's less people joining the crypto world in general. Um, I think that there there's a ton of people, big time executives coming over to the crypto world. And I think it's going to be really interesting when we start seeing uh, different companies start to um, securitize certain real world assets in in the digital space. And that's when like that's kind of my outlook on the future is when we'll, we'll kind of see another like natural bull run. Um, and then we might see like a nice spike if we do get some sort of economic downtrend in the traditional markets. I think that'll also lend a hand to crypto as well. But I think there's two types of companies right now on, on the market, right? There's companies like crypto companies, at least. Um, there's companies that are, are solid, you know, maybe they already had their IPO, maybe something like, um, Charles Schwab or something, right? And they're getting into the blockchain industry to create um, some sort of blockchain technology for their own company to to lower fees or or to to raise their bottom line to make more profits for their investors. And I think there's one play like those kind of companies. You play those by buying into their traditional to, to the traditional markets, right? You buy their stock. Um, and then there's other companies like all these cryptocurrencies that we're seeing uh, maybe on Coin Market Cap who are buying or, or creating these protocols or platforms or cryptocurrencies. And what they're doing is they're not really profitable yet. And they're not really returning a lot of uh, investor value yet if you own their coins. And those are that's another way to play these, these the crypto market. So I think that's interesting. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is the $1 billion blockchain fund founders plan Japanese yen stable coin. And so I think this is also interesting because this kind of uh, relates back to the, the Ray Dalio stuff is the fact that a lot of these big companies are trying to come out with, uh, stable coins, just like, um, uh, Gemini just created their own stable coin. And then there's, you know, TUSD. There's this one now is going to, you know, be the Japanese yen stable coin. So this is all very, very interesting. And they're actually accepting, um, the US dollar pegged cryptocurrency USDT tether. Um, from accredited investors outside of China. So that's kind of interesting to me because there was a lot of tether FUD recently going over the fact that their Omni Explorer kind of shut down, but I, I don't think that was actually a, a big deal with regards to tether. 
So with that said, I'm going to leave you with that. Um, in the next video, I'll, I'm going to do my best to do a uh, profit trailer um, and feeder and defender video. So hit the like and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take it easy.